Hey there, I am back with another deck review and today we're going to be looking at the Pride of Peacocks deck from Arcadia Playing Cards and designer Christian Ellenstad. Uh, this is Christian's first deck and was released on Kickstarter back at the end of 2018 before being fulfilled in 2019. The deck is of course inspired by peacocks, but also kind of delves into uh, Persian history. Peacocks really became significant in Persian culture all the way back from like the 10th century when they were first brought in from India. So let's jump into the deck and find out how the theme comes to life. All right, starting with the tuck case. It's a, bl a blue sort of glossy finish tuck case. No embossing on it, but it does have some beautiful and intricate cold foiling throughout. You can see that glowing gold throughout. A dark blue background, kind of mimicking the primary color that you'll see on peacocks uh, and their feathers. Has Arcadia luxury playing cards, big banner across the top, kind of reminiscent of how you'd see the bicycle banner. And then the name of the deck, Pride of Peacocks on a little banner underneath this large spade pip uh, that's made up of a peacock uh, on the inside. This sort of shape, the idea that a peacock's feather is fanning out kind of sort of resembled a spade pip. Uh, that was the initial design that inspired the entire deck. Then you've got the 52 for 52 cards and poker ties at the bottom. And then around the edges in gold, cold foil, are elements of kind of Persian architecture. You have the large archway over the entire deck, as well as Persian columns topped with little peacocks there at the top. And then at the base, you have these statues, kind of look like Sphinx. They're actually called Lamasas. Uh, they're Sphinx-like creatures, body of a lion, head of a man, uh, with the wings, I guess, of an eagle. These are reminiscent of some statues that you'll actually see guarding the gates of Persepolis, uh, the capital of the ancient Persian Empire. As uh, so you'll see large statues that sort of resemble these characters here at the bottom. So here they are standing guard at the corners of the deck. Really beautiful, really intricate. I wish there had been some uh, some embossing on this. I really think it would have added something to it. That was actually a stretch goal in the campaign. Wasn't quite met. And I think it falls a little bit flat just because there isn't any embossing and it feels like it needs some, but it is still a really beautifully designed, very intricate cover. I love the, uh, the extra touches here, like in the texture at the top, you have basically a peacock feather texture up there at the top, really nicely done. Now on the sides, you've got Arcadia playing cards on one side, True Linen B9 finish on the other. So you know this is gonna be a Cardamundi printed deck. Uh, bottom has your ad copy for Arcadia playing cards, mentions they're manufactured in Belgium. And then on the top, it just has some extra little uh, detailing and uh, gold foil at the top. Back's gonna be a foiled version of the back of the cards. We'll look more at those details in a second, but you can see that nice glow of the gold. And you do get a custom, uh, albeit kind of unnecessary tuck seal here, done in white and gold. Really nicely done. Um, you know, I prefer decks without a tuck seal, but it's a nice one. Inner flap, you have more of that peacock feather sort of texture with some extra details. And then just blue on these inner flaps, nothing printed on the interior of the tuck. Uh, so that's the tuck case. Not bad, like I said, would have been nicer with some embossing, but it is still beautifully done foil on those. All right, let's get into the cards and we'll start with the back design. Here it is a lot of really intricate detail going on in this one. All that dark blue background, but then hits of color that you might see on a peacock with some greens and some sort of aqua blues there. Uh, you have some of the same elements that we saw on the on the tuck case, uh, including the archway. Uh, you've got the columns there on the side with the peacock now in more full color sitting atop the columns. Uh, you have these two shapes here. These are really prominent uh, figure in uh, in Persian culture. Uh, this is called a Faravahar. Faravahar, it's a, it's a series of symbols. You have a man sitting there in the middle of kind of a chair with wings spread out to the sides. Uh, it's a symbol that rep uh, represents good thoughts, words, and deeds, and has become really prominent over the years in Persian culture. Uh, so that's what that symbol is at the top. You have kind of a starry sky pattern, uh, this large intricate kind of tile, in, Persian tile inspired pattern in the center as well. 
Really beautifully done, tons of very intricate lines going all the way around with that gold metallic ink. Uh, and then finishes out with a thin white poker border. Really nicely done. I will say if there's one sort of knock against this, it's that I find that the Cardamundi B9, it has that really distinctive line patterning. Let's see if I can capture it here. Yeah, you can kind of see it in the space right, right over here by my thumb. Uh, really distinctive line patterning that the texture of the paper gives. And I find that with this really intricate pattern, it kind of distracts a little bit from it uh, and kind of prevents me from appreciating just some of those really fine details when it hits the light wrong, but still a really beautifully designed back. All right, turning to the cards themselves, extra cards first, uh, you do get a pair of jokers. Uh, these are again, inspired by tile work, Persian tile work. Uh, they'll often do these like really intricate and beautiful motifs. This one, of course, represents peacocks. So you have a pair of peacocks sitting on the top or on the sides of this sort of vase with the flowers or the leaves growing out of it. Really beautiful, intricate work, all done in those blues, greens, and golds. And then it says Pride of Peacocks by Arcadia with tiny Joker Joker font in the corners. Two identical Jokers. So there are those. Uh, you also get a pair of gaff cards with a double backer and a blank facer. So there's your extra cards. We'll get into the deck itself. I'll we'll start with the Ace of Spades. I mentioned before that this Ace of Spades design is really what kicked off the entire deck. Uh, started with this spade pip and the idea that a peacock with his feathers fan would resemble a spade pip. And here it is. You have the peacock in the center uh, with his plumage out beautifully fanned out and then in the center of this large spade pit uh, all done in those dark blues little uh, accents of turquoise kind of a sea green and gold metallic ink forming a beautiful design and then a nice modern pip and index in the corner nice easily readable it's actually done in a really dark blue rather than a true true black uh, number cards are much the same slightly custom kind of more pointed uh, uh, pip there in the center, uh, but otherwise pretty standard, done again in that really dark blue. And then you also get custom quartz and really beautifully designed. Now the original uh, design, this was actually done twice on Kickstarter. The first time it funded it wasn't successful. There wasn't nearly as much customization. It used just recolored bicycle quartz. After the first design wasn't successful though, Christian went back and retooled the entire deck, went beyond just a peacock on the Ace of Spades and built out all of the Persian culture elements that you see here. And the courts were probably the most striking difference in those. So now instead of uh, just bicycle courts, you get still very familiar poses on these, but obviously completely, not just recolored, but redesigned Persian faces all inspired by actual Persian artwork, uh, carvings, statues of rulers over the years of Persian culture. And so you've got the beautifully done, primarily in that navy blue, but again, small elements of turquoise and gold mixed in there as well. Beautifully drawn faces, love the little elements, and you'll see peacock elements throughout. For example, the jack of space, instead of holding the classic little feather, actually has a peacock feather in his hands, or the queen of spades on her, I guess, scepter, you would say over here on the side is topped with a peacock as well. So lots of extra little elements on those. Uh, the red cards are in a pretty classic red color, almost a little bit more pink, has a little bit of shimmer to it in my eyes, uh, but pretty classic, easy to read. Again, those then is slightly more uh, pointed pips. And then into the quartz. I mentioned all of these are inspired by different rulers or actual statues and artwork. I don't know what all of these are, although I will say the King of Diamonds uh, is actually from Darius the Great. So if you wanna look up one of the rulers and kind of see the comparison, this one comes from uh, statues that you might see of Darius the Great, one of the great rulers of Persia. Uh, but beautifully done. The red quartz have some slightly different elements, including little tiny hits of red in there. So you'll see little bits of red lines, giving a little bit of distinction between the red and the black quartz. And then into the clubs, uh, these again, a little bit more custom on the club pip, but still very nice, easily recognizable. Into the club court cards, more beautiful 
uh, Persian elements. I really like this one, the king of clubs in place of the classic orb is holding a peacock egg in his hand. So another little peacock reference that's uh, thrown in. And then into the hearts and finishing out with the three heart courts, Jack, Queen, King, including the classic suicidal king with the sword through the head on the king of hearts. Really beautifully done. I love the hair on the Jack of hearts here. Got those little curls, beautifully done. Uh, now, as far as handling, this is on Cardamundi's True Linen B9 finish. So it's a really nice kind of infamous stock. I love the way that this handles. It's, you know, got a nice snap to it, fans beautifully, uh, just handles really, really nicely, smoothly right out of the box. In my experience, over time, the B9 finish tends to clump a little bit faster than like a USB-CC. Uh, deck, but out of the box, they handle absolutely like silk. Uh, so no complaints on that. Uh, really just think it's a great handling deck. Uh, now, as far as uses of the deck, I think really this deck honestly could be used for most anything. It's a great collector's piece, has lots of customization that I think really serves it well, but it's also nicely uh, familiar enough to use for gameplay or even magic if you wanted to. It's definitely not an overly uh, overly weird deck, if you will. So definitely familiar enough that you could use it for those purposes and really just kind of punch things up. Uh, it handles well enough for cardistry. I think, you know, it really is a deck that can serve a lot of different purposes depending on what you want to do with it. So for a first deck from Christian Ellenstad, I think he did a great job. I can find little things that I wish had been done differently. Most notably, I wish that uh, that stretch goal had been hit and there could have been some embossing on the tuck case. But all in all, it's a beautifully designed deck, tons of intricate details, beautiful customization on the courts, tons of research went into the elements that you see here, Persian architecture, artwork, uh, history, just love what was done with this deck. So really great job. I think just an outstanding deck. So hope you enjoyed this look at the Arcadia Pride of Peacocks deck. Uh, definitely go check them out if you are interested in picking one up for yourself. Uh, go take a look at the other decks. Arcadia has since, since put out a few other decks as well. Uh, so go check out some of their other decks. They do really great work. All right. Thanks for watching. Let me know what else you want to see. Make sure you subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings. And I'll see you for the next one.